You welcome to the Policy Council. My name is Okwemi Agbaje. Today we focus on the youth and the political environment and the policy environment and their role in transforming Nigeria. I talked to somebody who has acquired a great reputation for working in that space. And together we will have fun. Enjoy the program. You welcome back to the Policy Council. My guest today is uh, a very powerful and inspirational young lady. Um, she's well known as the CEO of Rice Networks. She founded that organization and um, she's a, a recent member of the Victim Support Fund and she's done many other things. Toyo Siakirile, you're welcome to the Policy Council. Thank you very much. The first day I watched you speak, I was, I'd not, for some strange reason, I must have been living in in Iraq, I had not heard much about you. And then the event was going all gentle and gentle. And then you took the microphone and I wondered what was going on in the room. How do you do that? You see, one of my most favorite records, you know, uh, that I've grown to love, you know, over the years would be that passion is an absolutely fundamental requirement for living. Mm. And that passionless people never live life, actually. Mm. They, they, tr they do throw life away. Mm. Um, and I'm usually not that, you know, passionate or neither do I feel strongly about every subject matter, you know, that comes my way. Mm. Uh, but I, I, I would think that that particular issue that was, you know, up for discussion that afternoon must have had something to do with either youth, mm. education, unemployment, mm. or national development. I believe that, you know, uh, even you know, irrespective of the very debilitating challenges that bedeviled Nigeria as a country, my generation will be the turning point generation. And so, when did you make up your mind that you were going to do something like Rise Networks, mobilize the people, well, um, deep focus on youth? Well, maybe deliberately at some point in my, in my adult life, mm. I made that decision. Mm. Uh, but I guess that it's always been um, what, what, you, what I've grown up to be. I'm a first child of four mm. children. Mm. Um, I'm in primary school. I was a primary school head girl. Mm. You know, the, actually, the very first head girl of the primary school I attended. Mm. Um, in secondary school, I was a, a prefect. And in my, fa in my university, I became the youngest. I emerged, you know, the youngest uh, deputy speaker of the University of Jaws, of the mm. Students' Union House of Parliament. So I guess Providence has always given me, you know, some, some, some opportunity to be almost, you know, like the voice of the people. Mm. Uh, but because, again, I understand that, you know, sometimes certain things would enjoy more patronage or mm. they would make more fundamental impact if they were allowed to function within a structured you know, um, ecosystem. Mm. I decided that it was, you know, important to found an organization that would speak to the current realities and address the main issues mm. that affect my generation. Unfortunately, you know, at the age that I am, mm. I, I, I don't feel very much, you know, like a youth, yeah. even though I'm very young. Yeah. You know, but uh, I believe that because I've had seven years mm. to groom, mentor, train, teach, tutor, and hold by the hand a lot of young people. And because I strongly believe in succession planning, mm. um, one of my major commitments over the next few months to years would be to leave, you know, to quit that public space gradually, especially on issues of this nature, mm. move on to do other great things and mm. allow and support other young people to be able to take on the space to advocate for the issues that actually do affect our generation, but may mm. not speak to me mm. as, as, as they used to before. I, I saw somewhere on, online where Rise Networks was described as, let me quote, a <laughs> private sector funded yes, youth interest social enterprise in Nigeria focused on national development and relationships to economic growth and democratic consolidation. Do you accept that as a description of Rice Network? Yes, I do. Or how do you describe it? Um, I would Rice describe, uh, you know, that would be a more, uh, that would be the more formal description mm -hmm. of our organization. Mm. Uh, but uh, informally, if I, was, mm. if, if I was engaged by an average young person, mm. you know, on the road, what does Rice Networks do? Mm. I would say it's that, uh, organization down the road mm. that mirrors, you know, the state of mind of the mm. average young Nigerian. Okay. But not just sits, you know, static in a in an in ideal, a, you know, in an ideal state of mind. 
you know, believing that change will come. It's mm. an organization, we are an organization that believes that we must move our generation from motivation to action. Mm. And we must move from just talk, because talk has never proven, talk doesn't cook rice. Mm. And talk has never proven to be enough or adequate and or sufficient. And has never Exactly. I don't see any, uh, any, any developed nation that has, you know, be, been transformed or experienced any level of rapid development as a result of, you know, talk and uh, conversations and all of that. Mm. I believe, you know, developed nations would be products of very deliberate action, mm. you know, of the most productive generation, actually. Mm. And so our work majorly ties and leans a lot towards, you know, harnessing the potential of, an, of a generation. But if while we're aware that it would be tough to engage the over 60-something million, you know, young people mm. across Nigeria, what we've also done is to you know, look at the main issues and mm. narrow down certain areas that we believe if we can tackle and engage stakeholders in a way that they're compelled as a result of these consistent conversations mm. and, you know, action, you know, moves to be able to consist, you know, consistently make, you know, investments in the successor generation. Okay, let's take a short time out. We'll be right back. You welcome back. It's still the Policy Council, and I'm talking to Toyo Seakirele. I'm sure you know her. Uh, so, Toyo, mm -hmm. I, I just want to know what you see that alarms you about the state of the country. Uh, I'm, I was born, bred, and buttered, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, in Nigeria. I'm a fervent believer in the Nigerian project. Mm -hmm. I am a product of Nigeria. I, I'm until I finished my tertiary education at the University of Jaws. Um, you read law. Yeah, I studied civil law. Everything that I'd ever done was right here in Nigeria. Mm. It's a country that produced me and has blessed me, despite the very you know the several challenges that young people every day you know tend to complain about. Mm -hmm. But over the last few years, mm. um, it would be tomfoolery or what you call foolhardy, mm. to stay in a state of denial mm. and pretend as though we're not conversant or familiar with the way things continue to deteriorate. Mm. Uh, especially with the, in the, you know, in the, the quality of governance, mm. the accountability of the people that we've empowered with our votes mm. to run for office and go on there to serve the people. Mm. Um, the level of insecurity, mm. um, you know, the quality of education and mm. how things have become a bit more abysmal and mm. they continue to dwindle. Mm. And, but you see, my faith is renewed on a daily basis. Mm. So I, while I'm familiar with these challenges, I would rather not you stay... Respondent. I was respondent because all of these things are happening. Mm. Well, fortunately, I don't have anywhere to go. Mm. And so what I would rather do is to sit down and not you know, stop, stop my fingers mm. and begin to focus on the solution. Mm. What I want Nigerians to do is to take ownership mm. of our challenges as much as we take ownership of our conquests. Mm. Because every time something good happens for our country, we are all quick to say, oh, well, the Super Eagles just won the mm. Cup of Nations. Oh, our president is speaking at the African Union or the United Nations. Oh, Chimamanda just wrote a great book. Mm. Oh, this person, Diban, just made us proud at the MTV Base Awards. Mm. When bad things come, we push it and say that it's the government. Mm. Now, the government is the product of the society. Mm. And a society where people and not empowered with adequate knowledge to be able to call the, to be able to demand a certain level of mandatory accountability from the government, then there's a problem. Mm. But I don't even think that the problem, the problem is not the problem. Our mm. attitude to the problem is the problem. Mm. And until Nigerians as a people begin to embrace our, our country as Nigeria, and until we come to a level of understanding that Nigeria is not about the government or the bank who didn't give you a loan or the lecturer who didn't give you an extra mark because you offered bribe mm. or that boss who didn't let you pass because you did the wrong thing or that employee who stood up to you when you tried to exploit him or her, Nigeria will change because mm. you look around the road and you see people throwing, uh, 
You know, people throw things off their windows mm. and then the drainage systems are blocked. That mm. is not the government. Mm. You look around the road and you see men sleeping with children young enough to be their last daughters. That mm. is not the government. Mm. Those are the people who are menaces to society. And the quality of those in individual values is collectively what makes us Nigerians. Mm. And until our approach is a bit more progressive, we would not experience that level of wholesome development that we desire as a country. Mm. Now, I understand that we have the, the vested constitutional powers of leadership are in the government mm. at every level. And this for me is an opportunity to also call on the federal, state and local government, all the people who are representative of us, of the people at these levels, to know that one day the poor will have nothing to eat but the rich. Mm. And that it don't, it's only a matter of time. If you get away with something today, I, I mean, I know ex-governors who are perpetually going to stay in a state of fear, in a state of pandemonium. Mm. So, as Nigerians, we have a responsibility. To as demand. the government, as to demand. Mm. But not just to demand, to play a part. And, and, and as the part. government, the government owes us to be accountable. Because you can rig elections, mm. but you can't rig the truth. Mm. You will come back, you know, I keep saying that all these politicians, <laughs> all these politicians who assume that you know you would steal. I, I, I mean, I know that a, a few of our people suffer what you call selective amnesia. Mm. So we forget. But I like the, the, the way our generation is engaging politics and engaging, you know, you know, engaging government these days because I guess we're in a state of, the, we, we're tired. Mm. We've reached that point where enough is enough. Mm. And I'm scared that, you know, we don't want Nigeria to go up in fire because, you know, the country, the people, the masses are tired. The politicians won't back down mm. and robbing us, you know, robbing and raping us. And I'm afraid that where that head-on collision would happen, what the ultimate result would be. In the next segment, I'm going to ask you what specific role you expect Nigerians to play, Nigerian youth to play, mm -hmm. as we go into 2015, mm -hmm. and what you will do about it. We'll be right back. Government wants our city to become a mega modern city. And so, government is providing modern markets for us to carry out our business. Now, this requires money. So, we need to pay our taxes to help government to help us. I pay my taxes. I hope you've paid yours. I pay. Pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. You're welcome back. I'm talking to the fairy Toyo Akirele. I'm the very passionate Toyo Akirele. So Toyo we, 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 we let's talk about 2015 and um, your expectations of the Nigerian youth. What do you expect them to do? What are you encouraging them to do? And what role will Rise Networks play in that process? My forte is strategy. That's all I've learned to learn. Hmm. And um, I remember one of my classes, at, in my competitive strategy classes at the University of Cambridge two years ago. I learned that it takes twice the energy to swing and hit mm. than the energy it takes to swing and miss. Mm. And uh, because I believe in strategy, I would take a look at this in a very objective, practical, pragmatic you know, manner. One of my recommendations that, you know, for young Nigerians for ahead of 2015 and for 2015 is to build very solid strategic alliances. Mm. Um, the older people are making a very huge, they are achieving very huge success in dividing us. Mm. And as I get closer to power, I learn to choose my battles and not to make enemies. Mm. While I understand that it would be tough for me to be in the good books of everyone, I would make effort to make a positive impression mm. on everyone. Mm. My reason, all these old people who have led us over the years, Uncle Okwemi, they are all friends. Nobody can tell me that APC and PDP are enemies. Mm. In, on TV, on Twitter, on Facebook, they are, they are, they are enemies. They are, they are seeming, they are fighting. You know, they're seeming at a table where they cannot seem to come to a compromise. Mm. Behind the clouds, all of them are friends. Mm. All of them are friends. Why would the young people then be divided? Mm. You know, do we want this house to fall against itself? Mm. And I think that it's, t it's high time Nigerian young people began to 
run for public office. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and I'm glad that President Jonathan the other day advocated that, you know, we should reduce the age limit for presidents, presidential candidates, mm -hmm. to the age of 40. Mm. I'd like to see smart young people like Uncle Fela Drotoye, mm. you know, like yourself. And mm. if you are the very intelligent, well-meaning, well-spirited Nigerians, come out to run for office because we're ready to put our monies on it. Now, two things. Nigerian young people need, need to begin to run for office. Mm -hmm. Nigerian young people need to begin to build, create wealth. Mm. There is no generation that was dependent that achieved any relevant change mm. in history. Mm. People don't win Nobel prizes for being the highest, for being able to do to fundraise. Mm. People win Nobel prizes for creating. Mm. People win Nobel prizes for innovating. Mm. People win Nobel prizes for setting up. Mm. People win Nobel prizes for conceptualizing. Mm. People win Nobel prizes for being for the ability to be able to move something from ideation to creation. Mm. And so we must move, the, we must, you know, get to a point in our nation where young people take the responsibility of leadership. And nobody's going to give this power to us. We're going to take it. Hmm. And we're not going to take it by revolution or bloodbath or by force. We're going to take it by strategy. Hmm. And so I have a few friends who have joined political parties and people are abusing them. Oh, they've joined them. I say no. Because if we have a few good people infiltrate these political parties, they may not be able to influence the process at the beginning, but as the old people begin to bow, they mm. begin to become the ones mm. who take over the mantle of leadership. Mm. And if they, if they epitomize and exude those values that we collectively, as a set of progressive Nigerians, uh, you know, have advocated for over the years, I believe that some change will happen. Mm. But this change, we must be ready to work for it. You, you mentioned the need for young people to... Create wealth, create to get wealth. wealth. Yes, because and I notice in some of your literature you are passionate about financial inclusion yes. and all of that. So, what's the connection? Now, you see, a job, you know, by definition in the book I read, is just over broke. It doesn't hmm. take you, it doesn't take you so far. Hmm. Um, I always tell my colleagues in the office that uh, we must, they must work as entrepreneurs. Hmm. I am an entrepreneur because yeah. I set up an organization. Mm. But they must work as entrepreneurs, as, as people who are leaders within, within a, an ecosystem. I give, I mean, the power that you have as an employer or as, or as a team lead, if you like, is to be able to, you know, my policy will be hire the people and set them free. Mm. And that's why it's tough for me to work with people who cannot think on their feet. Mm. I, I, I hate to micromanage people. Mm -hmm. I don't like to teach people what to do. I like to be able to guide you, but I'd like for you to take on responsibility. Mm. The job of a leader is to make more followers, actually. Mm. And the true worth of a great leader is in the number of people that you have empowered, the number of lives you have touched. Well, not just touched, but being able to move them from level A to level B. Mm. And so... I believe, in, I believe very much in wealth creation. Mm -hmm. I believe very much in the capacity of young people to be able to apply knowledge, mm. you know, put knowledge to work and generate income as a result of that. And therefore be independent. And therefore become independent. Because mm. you see, in a situation where the same mind clamors for bread and books, bread will always win. Mm. And these politicians understand the language of bread. <laughs> and that is the reason why, you know, um, somebody would criticize... Uh, uh, well, I remember. I, I remember in the kids' elections, APC said that uh, PDP had shared rights. You know, your fire shared rights. And then during the uh, Osho okay. elections, there was odorless fufu. They all, I mean, do you understand? Because these people know that at the end of the day, the people, people are have got to eat. And I keep saying something. Our politics has not matured to a point where we are trying to do idealistic politics. Mm. Nigerians need to come back to the real world. Mm. And the reason is because, and I think about a young graduate in Nigeria who earns maybe 60,000 or when say 100,000. Are you, do you know, are you aware that people are willing to move from one job to another for a minimum addition of about three to 5,000, mm. depending on what level they work? Mm. If, so you are talking long term. A, a, the person who can think and understand long term is a person whose level of development has left poverty, mm. lack, want behind, mm. Mm. who is in a bit of a state of comfort mm. and can then begin to think, decipher, and mm. make sound judgment. Mm. Now, when you think about an average Nigerian at the very lowest level, these are people, you are talking about long term, four years. <laughs> when somebody has been the eating ever eat. from January to March, you mm. then give him a full bag of rice in April. You tell him to go and vote the other guy. For him, he's not thinking long term. Mm. He wants the immediate mm. reward. Mm. And that's the reason why until we get to a point where the average Nigerian is able to touch and feel governance, mm. 
until the average Nigerian is able to feel a presence of government in a way that is representative of his own interest. Mm. Our, politi our political system will never embrace ideology. On that point, let's take a final time out and I'll be back. I'm sure you're enjoying this conversation. You welcome back to my final segment with Toyo Akirele of Vice Networks. You have this event that is um, imminent, um, the United Nations International Youth Day. Yes, and I see that you have governors and you have ministers, and, ministers and people like people. Mrs. Alakija and Jimmy Agbaje. What's the idea? Um, so the theme for this year of the United Nations International Youth Day is uh, youth and mental health. Hmm. And... Uh, I guess that the UN had Nigeria in mind when they chose that topic because it's almost um, the state of psychology, the psychological disorder that Nigerian young people are going through at the moment is incredible. Mm. Uh, unemployment. So a young person hasn't eaten all day. Um, it affects his mental state of mind. Mm. A young person graduated five years ago, mm. has no job, mm. he, and he sees his mates who we were bottom of the class, mm. you know, rolling in money and driving maybe cars. Maybe a counselor. You know, you know what I mean? Or maybe uh, a militant. Men, you know, it affects his mental state of mind. Mm. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, several issues. Boko Haram, people mm. are losing, bring, you know, cheaper girls, please. Mm. You know, bring back our girls, mm. please. Bring back mm. our girls now mm. and alive. Because mm. I'm even, I'm worried too. So, I mean, it's, there's several issues that are affecting Nigerian young people these days and mm. we, we just thought it was significant at this time mm. to uh, hold to set up an intergenerational dialogue okay I've met a few very progressive politicians actually so mm. I wouldn't I wouldn't condemn all of them to mm. rabbis mm. you know I've met a few very um, progressive leaders mm. in private sector as well mm. and I approached a few of them a few mm. governors a few ministers especially the Minister of Labor mm. who's in charge of job creation mm. and a few others you know successful entrepreneurs mm. activists lawyers mm. Mm you know, civil society, to be able to ask them and say, um, where did you go wrong? Where mm. did your generation go wrong? And mm. what lessons can we take away mm. from your own generation so mm. that we don't replicate the mistakes? Mm. You know, because I believe there's a, there was a generation before the generation in power at the moment. Yeah. And I'm not sure of the legacies those ones handed down. Whether it was them who handed down the they, wrong they, legacies they, to they, you, they call or whether it was, whether it was the Western them. generation. No, no, no. Professor Wally Shwenka spoke for himself. Mm. No, he spoke for his generation. Yeah, but, there's, uh, but there was no, it was the, in no codified form, mm -hmm. he didn't make that statement. Mm -hmm. So you cannot attribute, you can't, you can't, you can't color it as a reality mm -hmm. of an entire generation. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it, was, if it was their generation who handed over the wrong <laughs> legacies to you, or your generation decided to. <laughs> Or your generation decided you, to... Let me, let me challenge you, Toyosi. Go on. Is your generation different from the others? Fantastic question. Our generation may not be different, but we can be different. Okay. We may not be different because somebody's got to convince me why I should not be corrupt in this country. Mm. Because our reward system is fundamentally flawed. Mm. It's a country where somebody steals money and you give the person a chieftaincy title. Mm. Somebody sleeps with another person's child mm. and flies private jets with teenage children, mm. sleeping with them. Children is supposed to be providing free education for, mm. and you reward them with a doctorate degree. Mm. And you see tons of people who turn out in that event to mm. celebrate a common criminal. Mm. That, is the word, that is the reward system that I'm watching as a young person. Yeah. The guys who worked hard for this country, the man who designed the Nigerian flag in this country, died in penury. Wa died in penury mm. in Ibado. And there's tons of heroes in this country that we never reward. Mm. Now, I will not steal because my personal values will not allow me to do so. Yeah. But for a young person who is, who is still in who that state less, of, uh, you know, um, who is less clear about his own life's yes, purpose and yeah. vision, is looking at these people. We are watching TV every day. We're seeing people live in such affluence in a country where you are telling us there's no money. Mm -hmm. Our generation can be different. Okay. If your generation makes a deliberate attempt to make a detour from the way you are going. <laughs> you people are the ones <laughs> who talk about billions and trillions, but yeah. we never see those things happen. You know, we never you see... Like, we, you read about yeah, them in budgets. You know, I, I want to touch it. I want to feel it. Mm. So let, yes, let me, let me, we, we, we you will be different. be different and we will help you my generation. Let me ask you a final question. Um, the Victim Support Fund. That's right. Do you think it will work? 
in terms of reaching the true victims of Boko Haram in Goza, in all those villages of Yobe, in all those villages of Adamawa and Bornu State, those people whose husbands have been killed by Boko Haram, those orphans whose parents have been killed. Let me, one, of the, one of the most brilliant decisions and brilliant and timely decisions that President Jonathan has ever made mm. is the, you know, um, setting victim up support. of this victim support fund. Um, yes, I think it will work. Mm. As a young person, one of my my commit, one of my underlying goals and objectives of being, you know, after I, I was inaugurated no, into that it. committee, that I set for myself is to say this committee will not go the way of other previous committees. Mm. You see, the day that I set up, the day that I put up that information on my personal Facebook page or on Twitter, that that uh, I joined the committee, I thought Nigerians would come to come at me with such backlash. Mm. I had a few people who were not very impressed, who mm. had, who felt I become political because mm. I joined. Mm. But I was impressed by the benevolence of Nigerians, even people offering me support in terms of to what can we help you do? Mm. And th for me, that's it. It is a call to action. Well, I should be considered a failure if one. My impact and my voice becomes, you know, it does not come to the fore on the issue of this victim, not just mm. the fund, but advocating for the, the rehabilitation victims. and support of the victims. Mm. Number two, I should be considered a failure if I begin to see that this f committee will go as one of those wishy-washy committees that did not do anything, and I mm. refuse to resign. Mm. The moment I note, but I'm confident the committee will work, and I'll tell you why. The leadership of the committee is, cap is competent. The leadership and the capacity mm. in general to and my deputy chairman, Mr. Foladiola, I believe that if, you know, we, we put Holland on deck on that committee and we are committed Nigerians that would not just sit on the fence to criticize, but would actually move from armchair critics to real mm. advocates, Action. you know, of development. I want to believe that we, we plan. I know that the internal plans, some of our plans will be to you know, focus on healthcare, resettlement of people who lost their homes, replacement of you know, certain personal effects and property of certain people who lost certain things, mm -hmm. and also education. Because, for example, to, as of today, there are over 500,000 children mm -hmm. from the northeast part of Nigeria who, have, who are out of school as a result of this crisis. Mm -hmm. And one of our, you know, some of the recommendations that I'll make the, to the committee would be that we need to resettle those children in other more stable portions of Nigeria so that they can continue their education. And there are over 100,000 Nigerians who, are here, you know, who, have, who have run away to Cameroon. Mm. We need to bring them back to come home. And for 2015, we need to make sure that those people are not disenfranchised. Absolutely. We'll By be no right means. back. Like my guest said, I agree that this generation of Nigerian youth can be different. The question is, will they be different? It's a challenge I will leave with our youth to ponder upon. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.